Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the second video in my YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in to the first video. Um, I'm really happy I started the channel. So as I told everybody before, uh, we're gonna be breaking this channel down into several parts. Uh, notables are gonna be gear reviews. We're gonna have um, on-the-site photography training and we're gonna have post-processing tips and tricks for you guys. So, without further ado, I'd like to start my first gear review for you guys. And this is the introduction to the gear of the Canon 7200 F4L IS Mark II. So guys, a little bit of history about the 7200 lens that Canon released. Um, it started off in 1995. They released a 7200 um, Mark I version of the 2.8 uh, aperture lens, which is obviously the bigger brother of the f4 variant, uh, letting in a whole stop more of light. So in terms of relative size, the 2.8 version is about as large as this Canon 300. So it is uh, significantly bigger, but we'll get we'll get into that a little bit later on. Um, 1999 saw the first iteration of the Canon 7200 f4L without any uh, optical stabilizer, so no image stabilizer. Um, and then in 2006, after all the praise that that lens received, the 7200 F4L IS USM uh, was released in 2006. Uh, and it got just as much praise as the Mark I version, if not more. Some saying that the uh, 7200 uh, Mark II with the stabilizer was even sharper than the non-stabilized lens. Questionable debate. Funny thing is, uh, that the lens that people wanted the most of um, was actually the last to be upgraded, and it was the 7200 f2.8. Well, that didn't happen because the Mark III version just came out recently, so it was the last in line to be upgraded. Um, that's a little bit of history behind the world-renowned 7200 lens. It really is a stellar lens, and I'll be getting into that a little bit later on with you guys. Uh, we'll be going over a couple of things, such as the notable improvements, the ergonomics of the lens, the history of the lens, the uh, pricing change, is there any jump in sharpness, what are the uses for the lens, what kind of competition is out there in users that use the Canon 7200 um, lens. Keep in mind that this is also a lens that's used by many people on different camera bodies. Uh, Sony users using the Metabones adapter uh, who are already invested in Canon glass also use this lens. Uh, it's just how world-renowned it really is. So some of the uh, notable upgrades um, in regards to the Canon 7200 F4L IS Mark II. A lot of people, from what I read, from what I read on message boards and the po people that I've spoken to, uh, considered some of the upgrades to be not very, I guess you could say substantial. Well, in my opinion, I find the upgrades to be very substantial, very important, and very noticeable. Um, a couple of the upgrades. Well, first of all, the smallest of the upgrade, I guess, for most people would be the color change. The uh, new 7200 has a m nice white color. Uh, in comparison to the old Canon lenses, I'm not sure if you can see on the video, but they're more of a yellow shaded color versus the bright white that the new generation of Canon lenses have. Not a big deal for some, but for some people it is. I personally like the new creamy white color. I think it adds a sense of professionalism to the lens and it's a style, it's definitely a stylish lens. Um, the weight has gone up. It's gone up by about 60 grams. Uh, it's now uh, 800 grams, which is 60 kilograms, uh, sorry, 60 grams heavier than the uh, Mark I IS version. From what I recall, the non-stabilized Mark I version is another 30 or 40 pounds lighter than that. I don't have the exact number though. There's also uh, better weather re resistance and weather sealing. So the elements, uh, the body is now much more weather sealed uh, in line with the new current L standard from Canon. So they could definitely take a beating. I have used this lens uh, in snowstorms. I've used it in very heavy rains and downpours. Without problem, there's been no condensation in my lens, no problems with the autofocus, not even a sound actually. It's been very rock solid. Um, there's also a fluorine coating now on the lens versus the old lens. And a fluorine basically means that the front glass and the back glass are coated with a special substance, keeping them cleaner longer and are much easier to clean in regards to the Mark I version, which did not have the fluorine coating. 
The minimum focusing distance has also been reduced from uh, 1.2 meters down to one meter. Uh, so you can imagine even with an f4 lens uh, a one meter focusing at 200 millimeters can give you definitely nice separation of your background bokeh obviously is not a problem with this lens so anybody looking for uh, that type of depth of field and background blur you're definitely going to find it in this lens even if it is an f4 version i do have actually some photographic pictures to show you guys the difference between the 7200 f4 and the 2.8 version and the difference is not as astounding as you might think it is in terms of bokeh quality um, apart from that, the stabilizer uh, is now up from a four-stop stabilizer to a five-stop stabilizer. And the biggest improvement of that is that it's much, much quieter. I don't even hear the lens focusing, actually. When I'm able, I can close, I can have lights, everything off, sound off, lights off, in total darkness, and I focus on an item, I don't even hear that stabilizer going off. It's very, very quiet. Speaking of that stabilizer, I have been able to get shots with this lens uh, as low as one-fifth of a second. Uh, at 200 millimeters without a tripod and I don't have a very steady hand at all and actually have a very shaky hand So uh, on the mark one version I was able to get 1 20th 1 30th of a second cleanly uh, Which is actually very notable in my opinion, of course There's now also a, a stabilizer mode 3 so there's 1 2 and 3 and not just 1 and 2 on this lens Filter has been changed. Uh, it went up from a 67 millimeter to a 72 millimeter so that might be a problem for some of you existing filter users who are not using square filters. Uh, 72 millimeters is still a pretty common uh, size in filters. I wouldn't say they're as common as 77, but I had no problem switching to 72 millimeter filters from 67. Um, in terms of the diaphragm, we now uh, have a nine blade aperture versus an eight blade aperture. And all that does is accentuate your, your sun stars a little bit more. So shooting into the sun will give you nice rounded and pointy sun stars. Not to say the Mark I version wasn't good, but this is just a little bit better. Speaking of shooting into the sun, this lens controls lens flares from the sun, I would say drastically better uh, than the Mark I version. Unfortunately, guys, I don't have any comparisons to show you because the Mark I lens, unfortunately, I didn't have for very long. But uh, I did do the test for myself and I was very impressed by how well the Mark II controls lens flare. There is still some lens flare, of course, uh, that's very hard to completely diminish or actually get rid of permanently when you're, you're basically photographing directly into uh, a bright object like the sun, but it's definitely better controlled than the Mark I version. Um, apart from that, um, tripod collar. Sad to say that it wasn't included in the Mark I version, nor is it included in the Mark II version. Something I wasn't too thrilled with when, when I got this lens from Canon. Um, just disregard this Wimberley plate. I keep these plates uh, mounted to my tripod rings all the time. Uh, I'm going to explain what these plates are in another video, probably in the coming months. These are called Wimberley plates. Canon accessory mount. Uh, so the tripod mount, unfortunately, is uh, quite a bit of money. You're talking at about 150 US dollars to get this tripod ring. Seeing as the lens is only 800 grams, one would think that uh, it's easily mountable on a camera with a tripod. You can get away with it, but unfortunately you will get a little bit of camera lag and camera sag on your tripod. Because even at 800 grams, there's still a substantial amount of weight basically pulling down your tripod head. Unless you're using a very high-end tripod such as uh, a Benro head or a Siru K30X head. Something along those lines are really right stuff. Topic for another, uh, for another video. So guys, uh, I know it's an expensive accessory, especially if you decide to opt on the ones from Canon, but I can tell you that it's worth every penny, uh, especially if you do a lot of landscape work and a lot of low light work, non-handheld. The tripod ring basically uh, saves the day. Uh, I've tried aftermarket ones, cheaper ones in the $40, $50 region. Unfortunately, they were not good. Uh, I was able to turn my lens uh, within the ring. Well, with the Canon one, you pay for what you get. I'm not able to turn this tripod at all, or this lens inside the tripod at all. Um, another little point. Uh, last but not least, chromatic aberration. Um, for any of you who don't know what chromatic aberration is, obviously the definition could be found on the internet, but I've left a little definition for you guys here in the video. Uh, there is still a slight amount of chromatic aberration, both axial and longitudinal. I saw them both, uh, and they happen mainly uh, at f4 and at f22. 
If you zoom in at 100% or 200% crop, you can see a little bit of the chromatic aberration and the fringing of the colors on this lens. Guys, it's nothing to write home about. It's nothing to be alarmed about. I would still say that in terms of that, it's well controlled. Didn't do any direct tests uh, in comparison to the Mark I version, but I'm happy to say that it does control the fringing pretty damn well. Speaking about the ergonomics of the lens, the feel in your hand, the weight, I briefly uh, shed a little bit of information for you about the weight before, but I'm going to go into a little bit more depth today. There's a big reason why a lot of travel photographers, as well as landscape photographers, and I would even say some portrait photographers, choose uh, an f4 version of this lens over the f2.8 version. And it's very simple, that's the weight. This lens uh, weighs 800 grams, plus the tripod ring, which weighs maybe 40 or 50 grams more. Uh, it's about 56% give or take weight reduction versus its bigger brother, the 2.8 version. Like I said, guys, I don't have a 2.8 version on me. I did have a Tamron 7200 uh, G2 VC, which is the same size as the Canon. But I do have my infamous 300, which a few people know me for. And it's almost as heavy as the 2.8 version uh, of the 7200. And let me tell you, there's a substantial difference even in size between these two lenses, um, even without the... Uh, lens hood attached more and more in weight um, every time I walk out the door uh, when I'm carrying my M5 with me uh, I will never bring my 300 it's very rare that I do just because I find it's too much weight not that I'm not in shape not that I can't carry it's not about that but for me for long travels walking hiking I'm a big ambassador as you guys know of using very uh, I wouldn't say the lowest quality lenses but I am an ambassador of using cheaper lenses and if I'm not carrying my 55-250 STMIS, that's a very cheap $200 plastic lens, which has stellar results, which I'll have, I'll have a review in a couple of months of that one. Well, then I'm carrying my 7200 F4 LIS Mark II. 800 grams, guys, it weighs nothing. Uh, I can have this lens on either of my either of my cameras, whether it be my 6D, my 5D4, my M5, it makes no difference. It, I can barely feel it, it's so small. That's a huge advantage for me and for any photographer, especially in landscape photography doing day hikes. Guys, quality difference. There is no quality difference. There's no imperceivable difference between this or the 7200 f2.8 version, whether it be the Mark I, Mark II, Mark III. Uh, I'm talking specifically about the Mark II version of the 7200 f4. There's no perceivable difference. Yes, the 2.8 version might get you an extra stop of light. I can't argue with that. However, with recent ISO cameras, especially high ISO cameras, such as our full frame counterparts, or even our, our, our offerings from Fuji, from Sony, from Canon, even the APS-C counterparts, we're able to be shooting at three, four, five thousand 5,000 ISO guys with clean results and minimal noise reduction. F4 gets you enough light in the daytime. And most people that are doing very serious landscape work, at least the people that I speak to at night, are on a tripod anyway. F4 serves enough of a purpose. Speaking about background blur, as you guys can see from the images on the screen, background blur is not a problem. Bokeh, as you want to call it, is not an issue for this lens at all. The difference is probably less than 10% between this and the F2.8 uh, version. Guys, I'm also a huge ambassador of Prime lenses, as you know. I shoot strictly with Prime when I am shooting weddings or events. And that's just because I have a soft spot for creativity. I find Primes bring out the best in my creativity. They are naturally faster. In terms of bokeh, yes, I, I do prefer my 135 F2L over this because the, the 135L is known as a bokeh monster, such as the 85 1.2. But guys, I use my F4 version 7200 more often than I can even imagine. When I'm doing street photography, it's with me. Landscape photography, it's with me. It's so versatile. I couldn't recommend it enough. I can't even, guys, I can't, honestly, I would even suggest it for portraits. It's that sharp. And there is no difference from 70 all the way through to 200. You have 70, 85, 135, and 200. These are all prime portrait photographer focal lengths. Speaking of sharpness, guys, you're not going to see a very big difference uh, across the board from the Mark I version. So if you're looking for a huge sharpness upgrade, you are gonna be disappointed. The Mark I was already a stellar lens, as I've told you, and you could read it all over the internet. It was praised by probably every landscape photographer out there, every review photographer out there, Dustin Abbott being one of them, praised the Mark I version. I've done tests with the Mark I version. It's stunning. Is the Mark II version better? Yes, Canon says that it is on paper. 
scientifically, sir, put it on a graph, it is sharper. On a computer screen, sharing on Instagram, I can't say I see a big difference. So if money is an object for you guys, I could tell you to heavily invest your, your money in the Mark I because sharpness and image quality upgrades is not one of the upgrades that you're buying this lens for. Speaking about pricing, uh, when the lens was announced, I wasn't sure what to expect from Canon. Knowing Canon, uh, they are very traditional when it comes to what they upgrade, what they don't upgrade. We all know that from the EOS R, but that's another story. Um, I wasn't sure what to expect, so I thought a couple of hundred dollars would have been reasonable for a price hike since that's where inflation is going, that's where our market is going. And I'm happy to say that the average price hike on this lens is between $100 to $150, depending on where you grab it, from Amazon, from BH Photo, from Adorama, um, which I think is very fair. Uh, you know, it's a very good lens. Actually, you know what? I'm going to say it's a stellar lens, guys. Uh, for me, the upgrades have not been just minor. They've been notable and then substantial versus this, the F2.8 Mark III version. I can't say the same. I might have a review for that one in the coming weeks, but I'm not so sure. Uh, I just feel as if this is a, this is a top-notch lens, top, top to bottom. So the $150 price hike is not a lot to pay for what you're getting, and it's what the market value is associated at. Um, in terms of competition, guys, What's out there? What are the options? What else could we go for? Why would I spend $1,700 on an F4 lens? Like I said, that's up to you guys. There's a couple of lenses you can buy actually for the same price if you want that F-stop or that 2.8 stop aperture. First and foremost is the Tamron uh, 7200 um, GC, the V2 version. I had it. Guys, it's amazing. But once again, if you don't have an 85 millimeter lens, a 135 millimeter prime, and you're looking to get one and only portrait lens, and you don't want to shoot prime, I agree, especially if you're an event shooter, pick up a 2.8 version. You will need that extra stop of light, especially in events. Uh, I shoot heavily with off-camera flash, so an F4 version will do the trick, but a lot of people who are only shooting with one speed light on their camera, the F4 will not be enough. You guys are gonna be shooting at 10, 15, 20,000 ISO in an event, so I agree get a 2.8 version lens. What else can I get? Guys, you can get, a, you can get the Canon 7200 F 2.8 Mark I version. Uh, they're being sold used on the market for seven, eight hundred dollars You can get them brand new for $1,100. You can get the 7200 F 2.8 Mark II version for around $1,399. You can get uh, the 7200 F4L non-IS for $500. You can get the F4L IS Mark I for around the $13.99 region plus tax. So once again, it comes down to why would I spend $1,700 on this lens? Well, at the end of the day for me, when I buy a Canon lens, I'm buying a name brand, I'm buying an investment. Uh, I know from the fact that all these Canon lenses can stand the test of time. My 300 F4L, they never made a Mark II, unfortunately, That's how, that saddens me. This is the lens from 1997. Guys, it stood the test of time. It's solid. It shows no signs of stopping, not a speck of rust on the contacts. The focus is always spot on. So, so one would probably mention that when you're buying an OEM lens, you're buying quality, you're buying a commitment, you're buying a product that you know will stand the test of time. I had a couple of uh, auto-focusing issues when I had my Tamron lens, uh, especially on the outer focus points of my 5D Mark IV. The Tamron lens would often miss focus and the lens would need to be calibrated. I understand that's not a problem with mirrorless cameras. That's a story for another day. But for all the DSLR shooters out there, uh, those are the issues that you can get sometimes with aftermarket lenses. They're not as reliable as the OEM branded lenses. So that's why I spent the money that I spent on my F4 version lens. And you know what? I couldn't be happier. If I had to give the Canon 7200 F4L IS Mark II a rating system, I don't have any rating systems for the moment, but I would give it a solid nine on 10. All of the usability upgrades, the paint, the stabilizer, the fluorine coating, um, slight sharpness increase, um, but the only negatives being the fact that Canon, you didn't give us a tripod ring. I don't like that and I think it's a lot of money to spend for $200 on a piece of metal that probably costs no more than $40, $40 if that, to manufacture. But all in all, guys, it's an amazing lens and I wholeheartedly recommend it. That being said, guys, that's it for my uh, review of the Canon 7200 F4L IS Mark II. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Keep in mind, it's my first review, guys. If I missed anything, if there's something you'd like to see, 
Don't be shy, leave a comment down below. If you liked the video and you appreciate my comment and my energy, uh, you can purchase this lens from any of the links below, from BH Photo, Adorama, and Amazon. It'll support me, it costs you guys nothing, and it keeps me going. If you liked my channel, don't forget to subscribe at Julian Farah, that's Julian with an A, and Farah with one R. Until then, it was a pleasure doing this room with you guys. Have yourselves a wonderful day.